Okay. So here's our first uh, example of using Newton's laws for rigid body problem. So let's say we have like a disk in two dimensions. Um, and the radius looks like it must be one. We'll put the coordinate system there. And let's say that there is over here an unknown force vector, F1. And on the other side, there's an unknown force magnitude, but at a known, in a known direction. This angle's 30 degrees. That's F2. Um, and down here, there's a couple, which I'm going to just write as a pure moment, of negative 450 Newton meters. And it would be totally equivalent to have drawn, uh, drawn this rotation going the other way and write this as positive 450. And I'm going to choose this as the about point, but that's not necessary for solving this problem. We could use a different about point and get the same things. Um, and we want to calculate F1 and F2 if the disk is in equilibrium. Okay, you need to draw a free body diagram before you use Newton's laws, um, before you write that table, but this pretty much works as a free body diagram. I, in a free body diagram, you probably shouldn't write the coordinate system on it and whatever, but I'm, I'm not going to do that again. This has, shows all the forces. So we can go to that pancake table. Pancake, artist, row, four, marzipan. Um, and we're just going to go through these loads one by one. So I'll start with this force F1. What are the coordinates where that's applied? Yeah, negative 1, uh, 0, Y, and then this is all in the plane, so I'll write 0, Z. What are the coordinates of the about point? Yeah, 0, 1, 0. And so the row vector is negative 1, negative 1, 0. This force vector F1 has an x and a y component. So F1, x, F1, y, 0. And now the moment is the cross product of these two vectors. So that's 0, 0. You know, x and y always have to be zero for problems in the plane. Um, and you get negative f1y plus f1x. What? The about point is up here for, yeah. That, that is a couple. That's what that means, that there's a couple acting at this point. And that doesn't have any effect on where you can put the about point. You can put the about point anywhere. The, the cool thing about couples, that's probably a little strong, but the, <laughs> the unusual thing about couples is no matter where the about point is, this just goes in as negative 450. Because, of, because there's no dependence on the about point, 
for couples. Okay, and now uh, let's do the force F2. What are the coordinates where that's applied? One, zero, zero. One, zero, zero. About point. So remember, uh, for a single body, the about point always has to stay the same. So this is zero, one, zero for any loads. So subtract and you get one, uh, negative one, zero. The force vector. So now we have to figure out the components of this. Um, can anyone figure out what that angle would be for cosine and sine for this? It would actually be 150. Um, so think of uh, putting a little coordinate system at the tail, and we're trying to figure out the angle from here to here. Okay. This angle is 30. If you, uh, if you recognize that, it probably scored you like one extra point on the SAT or something. Um, that has some name in geometry. You learned that in 10th grade or whatever. Um, so anyways, 180 to here, backtrack 30, so 150. So that force vector is uh, F2 times the cosine of 150, F2 times the sine of 150, so that's negative 0.866 F2, positive 0.5 F2, and then 0. And then the cross product is 0, 0. And then for the Z component, 0.5 F2 uh, minus 0.866 F2. And that one we can simplify. Uh, so that's 0, 0 negative 0.366 F2. And now there's one more load we have to deal with. That's the couple. We don't care about any of this stuff for a couple, so we'll just put this in as 0, 0, negative 450. Okay, so Newton's second law now. Uh, so this table is just a setup for Newton's second law and the rotational equation. So Newton's second law, you take all these things, everything in the force column, and that gives you the left side of Newton's second law. So F1 X, F1 Y, I could leave in the Z components, but it's just going to give us an equation that says 0 equals 0, so I'm going to leave it off. Um, plus negative 0.866 F2, 0.5 F2 is equal to 0, 0. And now we can go to the moment equation. So RN2L says, and I'm only going to I'm only going to use the Z components here because everything else is worthless. It'll just give us two equations that say 0 equals 0. So this says um, F1X minus F1Y minus 0.366 F2 minus 450 is equal to 0. And I got that just by taking everything in this column and putting that in the left side of the rotational equation.
So now we have three equations. Um, this is a system. of three equations for three variables. Um, the first one says F1x minus 0.866 F2 is equal to zero. The second one says F1y plus 0.5 F2 is equal to zero. And the third one says F1x minus F1y minus 0.366 F2 is equal to 450. And you can solve that using reduced row echelon form. So here's equation one, equation two, equation three. This is F1x, F1y, F2, and then this is the constant. So equation one says F1x, we have one of those. F2, we have negative 0.866 of those. And the other two are zeros. F1y, for the second equation, we have one of those. F2, we have positive 0.5 of those, and the other two are zeros. And then a third equation, uh, F1x, we have one. F1y, we have negative one. F2, we have negative 0.366. And the constant, we have 450. And could someone plug that in? I don't think I have those numbers here. I'm going to pause the video so it looks on YouTube like. Okay, so F1, the X component is 389.7. Okay, and the Y component? Okay. That's Newton's, and then F2 is equal to 450. Is that right? Yeah, we should always we should always do this in pairs. We'll keep doing it till two people get the same thing. <laughs> 